we all have a small bowel. Our small bowel is very long with a very large surface area. The small bowel mixes and churns the food up and it's a site where we absorb our food and get the nutrients. Image over here shows the small bowel lumen with its large surface area caused by all, but through all these villi and microvilli. Here we have a picture showing where we absorb all our nutrients and as you can see they're all from the small bowel. Normally there should be no bacteria present in that small bowel to compete with us for these nutrients. But in scleroderma the motility of the bowel can be affected. That means things move along it much more slowly. Sometimes they even stop. When they stop the bowels become wider and bloated and we call that pseudo obstruction. The image at the top shows a dilated small bowel. This stasis predisposes to infection. We call that bacterial overgrowth. We can test for it using breath tests. That means we give you a labelled sugar meal and monitor your breath samples afterwards. When the sugar goes into your small bowel, the bacteria will break it down to take the nutrients and in doing so they release the waste products that we can measure. So the graph shows a normal person at the bottom and a person with bacterial overgrowth as a top line. So you can see the waste products being released as that sugar hits the small bowel and is digested by those bacteria. We think from studies that up to maybe 12% of people with scleroderma have bacterial overgrowth. Though as I've already told you, sometimes these figures are affected by the nature of the population studied. The study also looked at patients with symptoms and they found bacterial overgrowth present on testing in 38% of people with symptoms such as abdominal pain, distension, bloating and constipation and this weight loss of more than 5%. In actual fact, people who test positive in this study, most of them had two of these symptoms. There's no cure for this, but we have to try and control these antibiotics so that we have control. So we use antibiotics. And these antibiotics can either be intermittent, so short courses when needed, or rotational, if the bacteria keep coming back.